Welcome friends. This is the second part on ratio analysis. In this session, we are going to solve this question and following ratios. So here, let us see the question. Question says, following is the balance sheet of Tata Bata Limited Pune as on 31st March 2021. So here balance sheet is given, which includes liabilities and assets. Along with balance sheet, we have some additional information which includes total sales, cash sales, gross profit for the year, stock uh, on 1st April 2021. And from the above information, calculate the following ratios. So for, uh, we have to calculate the uh, following ratios which includes stock turnover ratio and data turnover ratio. See friends, in this video, I am uh, going to mainly focus on these two ratios, first two ratios, that is stock turnover ratio and data turnover ratio, because I observe that many of the students get confused about these ratios and they, uh, they don't know exactly what is the importance of these ratios. Okay, so let us start with first ratio. First ratio is stock turnover ratio. So here, formula for stock turnover ratio is cost of goods sold divided by average stock so here we have to use the uh, uh, you, you we have to use this formula stock turnover ratio is equal to cost of goods sold divided by average stock in order to find out the stock turnover ratio so uh, from the given information first we must calculate the cost of goods sold and average stock so that we can uh, calculate the stock turnover ratio see friends cost of goods sold can be calculated with this equation or uh, like uh, this equation here on the screen you can see that cost of goods sold is equal to sales minus gross profit so we can use this equation or formula to calculate the amount of cost of goods sold there is another formula for that but here uh, i am going to use this simple formula which is uh, sales minus gross profit so basically sales minus gross profit gives us cost of goods sold so now let us calculate the cost of goods sold so here in the additional information total sales are given which are 9 lakh so here total sales 9 lakh and gross profit is also given gross profit is 3 lakh rupees so 9 lakh minus 3 lakh it gives us rupees 6 lakhs so cost of goods sold or amount of cost of goods sold is rupees 6 lakh right now uh, along with this cost of goods sold we need to calculate the average stock as well so uh, for average stock we can use this formula opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2 it will give give us the average stock so here in the question uh, in balance sheet uh, uh, which is uh, as on 31st March 2021 stock is given which is 2,50,000. So friends this is closing stock and in additional information stock on 1st April 2020 is also given this is the opening stock right. So it means in question opening stock as well as closing stock is given. So we can calculate the average stock. So opening stock plus closing stock opening stock is 150000 which is given here in the additional information and closing stock is 250000 which is given in the balance sheet okay so here 150000 plus 250000 it is 4 lakh 4 lakh divided by 2 uh, so here average stock is 2 lakh rupees right so in this way we can calculate the average stock see friends if the uh, the opening balance of uh, closing stock is not available in the question in that case we can take the closing stock as average stock right see friends one more time in order to calculate average stock we must have opening stock as well as closing stock but if in a question the opening stock is not available in that case we can take closing stock as average stock right okay so here we have both opening stock as well as closing stock so here uh, we uh, uh, we have calculated the average stock as uh, this so here average stock is uh, 2 lakh rupees right now uh, we have cost of goods sold which is rupees 6 lakh and average stock rupees 2 lakh so we can put this amount in this formula so here cost of goods sold 6 lakh rupees and average stock 2 lakh rupees so 6 lakh divided by 2 lakh it gives us 3 see friends this ratio is a, uh, a expressed in times okay in previous uh, video or previous session we discussed that generally ratios are expressed as percentage 
as proportion or in times. So as these are the stock turnover ratio, debtors turnover ratio, creditor turnover ratio, uh, turnover ratio, these are the activity ratio. Okay, they are expressed in time. So here stock turnover ratio is three times, right? See friends, this uh, stock turnover ratio is also known as inventory turnover ratio, right? Stock turnover ratio is also known as inventory turnover ratio because stock or inventory are one and the same. We use these words interchangeably, right? So this ratio is also known as inventory turnover ratio. This ratio shows the rate at which the stock is converted into sales and ultimately into cash. Okay, so as we discussed that, the uh, stock turnover ratio is activity ratio and this ratio shows the rate at which the stock is converted into sales and ultimately into cash, right? So basically this uh, ratio shows that how uh, efficient, uh, efficiently the uh, stock is managed by the organization, right? Because a high ratio is good. It means uh, stock is frequently converted into the cash, right? So if ratio is very high, it is good for business. And a low ratio shows that the stock or inventory moves slowly. Okay, so if the stock turnover ratio is very low, it shows that stock of the business or inventory of the business remains in the go down for long time or remains in the warehouse for the long time. It means uh, 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 business is maintaining the excessive stock, excess stock, which is not good for the business because our capital gets uh, locked in uh, in these types of stock, right? So basically, stock turnover ratio or inventory turnover ratio shows the rate at which the stock is converted into sales and ultimately ultimately into the cash and high ratio is good for the business which shows that liquidity position of the business is good and low ratio shows that the stock or inventory of the business remains in the go down or warehouse for a long time right so uh, this is the importance of stock turnover ratio right here in this question stock turnover ratio is three times it means during the years only three times the stock is converted into the cash right it means uh, this business is maintaining the uh, excess stock with itself or uh, its management is not very efficient, right? In, in this way, you can uh, interpret this ratio, right? Now here, one more time, which I, uh, I uh, discussed earlier that if opening stock is not available, closing stock is taken as average stock, right? Similarly, if cost of goods sold is not available or it is not possible to calculate the cost of goods sold, in that case, we can take net sales instead of cost of goods sold, right? So see friends, uh, you must wonder that uh, how, uh, uh, how uh, instead of cost of goods sold, how we can use the net sales. See, ratio analysis is a, a very flexible approach to the analysis of financial statements, right? It is not rigid. So that's why uh, instead of cost of goods sold, we can use net sale. And as uh, we discussed earlier that instead of op uh, if opening stock is not available, we can take closing stock as um, average stock, right? Now, I hope that uh, the concept of stock turnover ratio is clear here. See friends, if you have any doubt related to this ratio, you can ask me in the comment section, right? Now let us move on the next ratio. Here question asks us to calculate data turn, uh, data's turnover ratio. Okay, so we have already calculated the stock turnover ratio. Now uh, we need to calculate the data's turnover ratio, right? Formula for data's turnover ratio is credit sales divided by average data's, right? So this is the formula, credit sales divided by average data's, right? It means we need to calculate the credit sales first and then average data's. If credit sales are given in the question, it is well. See, uh, if credit sales are given in the question, see here total sales are given, then cash sales are given but credit sales are not given in the question. So we can calculate the credit sales. How we can calculate? See, total sales are rupees 9 lakh and cash sales are rupees 1 lakh 60,000. Okay, so out of 9 lakh, 
one lakh sixty thousand are the cash sales. It means remaining sales are credit sales, right? So here we have to sub subtract cash sales from the total sales, right? Total sales nine lakh rupees, cash sales one lakh sixty thousand, and credit sales here nine lakh minus one lakh sixty thousand seven lakh forty thousand. So credit sales are seven lakh forty thousand, right? Now let us calculate the amount of average debtors. See, we can calculate the amount of average debtors here uh, by adding debtors and bills receivable. Because see, friends, here uh, the uh, debtors as on 31st March 2021 are avail available, but the opening balance of debtors is not available here, right? Like in case of closing stock. We calculated the average closing stock by adding opening stock and closing stock and dividing it by two. But here, in case of debtors, only closing debtors are given. Opening debtors are not given here, right? Similarly, in case of bills receivable, also only closing bills receivable are, are available here. Closing uh, closing bills receivable are available here. Opening bills receivable are not available, right? So. If uh, the opening balance of debtors bills receivable uh, is not available, in that case, uh, we can just add debtors and bills re uh, bills receivable to uh, get the amount of average debtors, right? So here, average debtors is equal to one lakh fifty thousand plus thirty five thousand. See, amount of debtors is one lakh fifty thousand and bills receivables are thirty five thousand. So one lakh fifty thousand plus thirty five thousand, it is uh, one lakh eighty eighty five thousand. So average debtors are one lakh eighty five thousand. Right. See, friends. Here now we have credit sales and average debtors. Now we can put this amount in this formula. Okay. So here debtors turnover ratio, credit sales seven lakh forty thousand. Average debtors one lakh eighty five thousand. So here debtors turnover ratio is four times. Right. As uh, we already discussed that stock turnover ratio, data turnover ratio, creditors turnover ratio, these are the activity ratio, right? So similarly, data turnover ratio is also shows uh, something. It shows the efficiency of the firm in collection of money from the data and shows the number of times data turn each year. It means data turn into cash each year, right? So basically, data turnover ratio shows the efficiency of the firm in collection of money from the data. Right? It is used to calculate the debt collection period or average collection period also. Right? So this data turnover turnover ratio shows the efficiency of the business in collection of the money from the data. We know that if the amount from data is not collected, it is very bad for the business. So it is necessary that we should collect the amount from data on time. Okay, and this ratio shows that uh, that efficiency of the business. Here, uh, data turnover ratio is four times. It means in a year, business organization has collected money from data four times. Okay, so money is generally collected. Uh, four times in a year in this case because here data turnover ratio is four times right as we discussed here that it is uh, it is it means data turnover ratio is used to calculate debt collection period or average average collection period it means uh, uh, in how many days we are receiving the cash from the data okay so here as data turnover ratio is four times now let us calculate this uh, average collection period or Debt collection period. See, friends, in a question, it is possible that uh, the uh, average collection period is given and you need to calculate the data. Okay. In this way, question can be asked. It means the uh, data turnover is given in the question and uh, we need to calculate data or data turnover ratio and average collection period is given in the question and we need to calculate the data. Right. For that purpose, see how to calculate the average collection period or debt collection period. Uh, here, uh, one um, uh, important information is related to the credit sales that if credit sales are not available, in that case, we can take total sales as uh, credit sales, right? It, it is assumed in that case that uh, total sales, all sales are uh, on the credit, right? So, if credit sales are not available, 
total sales are taken instead of credit sales right now uh, we were discussing about the average collection period average collection period or dip collection period can be calculated with the help of this formula that it is in a year divided by data turnover ratio or we can use the months in the year okay now let us calculate uh, the average collection period for this question so as here data turnover ratio is four time and we know that days in a year so generally there are 365 days in a year so 365 divided by four it gives us 91 it means the average collection period in this case is 91 days it means on an average uh, we take uh, or our business takes 91 days to receive cash from the debtors right and uh, similarly, we can calculate uh, this uh, average collection period in the months as well. Instead of days in a year, we can take months in the year. So in a year, we know that there are 12 months, 12 divided, four, 12 divided by 4 is 3. So 3 months. Okay. So if we use months, the answer is 3 months. And uh, here as we have used the days, answer is 91 days. So 91 days and uh, 3 months, I think it is one and the same. Right. So, in this way, we can use this data turnover ratio to calculate the average collection period. See, friends, there are various formulas for this data turnover ratio and average collection periods. It is one of the important ratio in the ratio analysis. Okay. Here, uh, I have taken this basic formula, but if you are interested to know the other formula of the data, uh, data turnover ratio and average collection period and how uh, we can use this uh, formula to analyze the balance uh, financial statements if you are interested to know all these things let me know in the comment section i will make separate video on the uh, data turnover ratio and average collection period right now i hope that uh, uh, the basic concept of data turnover ratio and uh, average collection period is clear here. Data turnover ratio can be used to calculate the average collection period and it shows the efficiency of the business in collecting money from the data. Right? So friends, uh, in this video, I would like to stop now because of the uh, restriction of time. Uh, remaining ratio we will discuss in uh, next session. Okay, so here stock turnover ratio we have already discussed, then data turnover ratio we have already discussed. Next ratio, uh, this is third ratio, that is gross profit ratio. So we know that it is very simple ratio, gross profit uh, ratio is calculated by uh, with the help of formula that is gross profit divided by sales multiplied by 100. Okay, so we'll uh, discuss the remaining uh, ratios uh, in the next uh, part of the video. So uh, make sure that you have subscribed the channel and please like this video, share it with your friends. Thank you friends. Thanks for watching.